Hi! This is Teacher Jen and welcome back to my channel. At kung bago pa po kayo sa aking channel, ako po ay nagbabahagi ng mga English lessons like reading and writing skills. Kaya kung interesado po kayo, i-hit nyo po ang subscribe button and i-ring ang notification bell para lagi po kayong updated once mag-upload ako ng mga bagong videos. Kaya ngayon, let's begin! In this video, you will learn the difference between definition and classification. Ano nga ba ang pagkakaiba ng dalawa? Malalaman natin yan sa video na ito. Division works hand-in-hand hand with analysis, wherein one breaks down a concept into its constituent parts. This process necessitates items creating the marketing lines or clear distinctions between or among the little things that make up the whole. Pag sinabi nating division, ito po ay ang paghahati-hati or pagbabahagi ng mga iba't ibang konsepto. Example, division of labor or paghahati-hati ng mga gawain. Classification, on the other hand, entails categorization in which enables one to group items according to their similarities. To further organize data that have already been divided and classified, label each subtopic so as to lessen the clutter. So, ang ibig sabihin ng classification, ito ay pagkakategora or pag-uuri ng iba't ibang uri ng konsepto na kung saan ito nabibilang. For example, a book is usually divided into chapters. The title of each chapter dictates what the similarities of the items are classified in each of the chapters. Novels usually follow a chronological division, while the seminal academic works are usually divided according to subtopics. Ang isang libro ay may iba't ibang uri ng kabanata or what you call chapters. At ang bawat kabanata ay nauuri sa iba't ibang paksa. Okay, so I will be giving you another example of a division para mas maintindihan natin kung ano nga ba ang mga ito. So kung mapapansin niyo, take a look, a closer look to this diagram. So ang una ay university. So ang isang university ay napaka lawak or napakalaking lugar para pamunuan lamang ng isang tao. Hindi niya kaya ito. Kaya ang isang university ay divided into colleges or campuses. So, sa isang campuses, meron namang iba't ibang uri ng departments. Halimbawa, education department, criminology department, accounting department. At sa mga departamentong ito, merong committees na nakapaloob. Halimbawa, Committee on Administration, Committee on Finance, Committee on Curriculum and Instruction, Committee on Field Operations. So, marami pang iba. So, ang mga division na ito ay may mga set of leaders and subordinates na magmimaintain ng maayos na komunikasyon at pamamahala. Okay, ngayon, nandito naman tayo sa classification. So, ano ang mapapansin nyo sa slide na ito? So, kung sasabihin mo, iba't ibang kulay ng kamay, oo, tama. So, ito ay nagre-representa ng iba't ibang kulay ng ating balat. Very good! There is just danger in categorizing that might sometimes be prejudicial. For example, grouping people according to their skin color. The white race signifies the Caucasian, the red race the Native American Indians, the yellow race the East Asians, the black race the Negritos, the brown race the Filipinos, and etc. In our attempts to understand the world and also the people around us, categorization might even fail us in terms of accuracy. Kasi hindi po lahat ng white ay Caucasian at hindi rin naman po lahat ng brown ay mga Pilipino. 
This type of division and classification is not a be-all solution to the attempt of grouping the myriad of skin color the human race has produced. In fact, it only promotes prejudice and racism. Okay, let's proceed with the principles in dividing and classifying things. Consistency, exclusiveness, and completeness. The first principle is what you call consistency. It is characterized by having parallel similarities in the divisions you make in your writing. Ang ibig sabihin ng consistency ay pagiging tuloy-tuloy at hindi pagbabago. So let's take a look at this example, A History of Greek Civilization, an excerpt. In this reading text, in the third paragraph, the author elaborates her taste in literature when she was young. At this point, the reader is already given an idea as to which organizing principle the author would use in the rest of the essay. That is to say, a chronological approach in defining what Greek is. After mentioning what had happened to her when she was young, she after mentioning what had happened to her when she was young, she goes on with the rest of her childhood and then the grade school, focusing on the sixth grade, then all of four years of high school in another educational institution. And last, a brief mention of her relationship with the literature in college. The second principle is exclusiveness. It means there is no overlapping between or among the items divided and classified together. In the case of A History of Greek Civilization, the author did a strict chronological writing of her relationship with literature from her early age until college without anything in between interrupting the flow. The last principle in dividing and classifying things is completeness. It means that no important part is omitted from the writing. So, walang importanteng ideya ang tatanggalin sa isang sulatin. For example, when one discusses the different systems of the body, one should not leave out the rest of the systems. All the systems in the body are somewhat and somehow connected to each other. So when you decide to just focus on the digestive system, that cannot be as it is also connected to the respiratory and excretory systems. Mention and discuss each and every human body system to achieve this principle called completeness. To summarize this lesson, the concept of classification, division, categorizing, and grouping save us from the chaos of having to identify every other unique and unusual thing we encounter. Without these processes aimed at systematizing, there would be no point of comparison for us to study the world. We would have no way of predicting or preparing for impending future unknown experiences. For my reference, it's Reading and Writing Skills, page 109-117 by Marielle Therese A. Thiongson and Maxine Rafaela C. Rodriguez. Alright, that's the end of our discussion. Hopefully, you can get something out of it. So, thank you so much for watching and hope to see you soon on my next upload. And you take care. Bye!